Hello everyone, it's Rob Bidolf here. Now I am a children's author and illustrator and today is a very exciting day for me because my first children's novel, Peanut Jones and the Illustrated City, is published today. So to celebrate, I thought I would read you one of my favourite chapters from the book. Before I do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background to the story. So it stars this little girl here, whose name is Peanut Jones. She's 12 years old and she's not very happy at the beginning of our story because about a year before we, uh, before the book starts, uh, her dad has mysteriously disappeared. Um, now her dad is an artist, just like Peanut, um, who is a very, very talented and creative little girl. And um, mum is not very happy with dad for disappearing, obviously. Um, uh, and so she has blamed the fact that he wasted his life being an artist. For some reason, this is this has become an annoyance to her. And so she decides to take it out on Peanut. And she takes Peanut out of her lovely, creative, art-embracing school and puts her in a school which is much more kind of science and maths focused. So Peanut is not at all happy. Um, and one day she is lying on the bed in her bedroom and she's looking through a box which is full of pat lunch post-it notes that her dad has drawn for her. Now, some of you might know that when uh, my daughter Poppy was younger, I used to draw a little post-it note drawing for her every day and hide it in her lunchbox just to cheer her up uh, during her school day. And that's exactly what Peanuts dad did for her. And that's where the whole idea from the story came from actually and um so she's looking through this box full of post-it notes and she notices she sort of shakes the box and it rattles and so she explores a little bit further and she finds a secret compartment at the bottom of the box and in that secret compartment is an amazing looking pencil in fact it looks more like a kind of sculpture of a pencil than a pencil itself and um and so she draws a little picture sort of absent-mindedly draws this little picture of a flower in a vase and she and she and then she falls asleep. And when she wakes up in the morning, she sees that the flower in the vase has drooped. And so she, she, she thinks, oh, wow. So does everything I draw with this pencil, does it come to life? Does it become real? And um, so she's walking to school the next day with her. Well, is he her friend? He's her study buddy, actually, because she's determined not to make friends at this new school. And at the school, they get paired up with another pupil as a study buddy. And her study buddy is a, is a young man called Rockwell. And she is she decides she's going to tell Rockwell what happened the night before with the flower in the vase. And Rockwell, of course, is quite sceptical. He doesn't really believe her, but she's quite insistent. So he said, right, OK, he's a very science background type child. So he says, right, we need to conduct an experiment to see whether we to test your hypothesis hypothesis to see whether what you say is true so the chapter i am going to read to you is chapter 14 here it is in the book there's my little look i'm using a little peanut post-it note as a bookmark uh, and it's chapter 14 and it's called the experiment here we go do i have to wear these Peanut pulled the school-issue plastic safety goggles over her head and let the elastic strap snap against the back of her skull. Safety first, so you last, replied Rockwell, pleased with himself for remembering one of Death Breath Dawkins' many catchphrases. Right, let's do this. Where's this pencil, then? Peanut pulled it out from her blazer pocket and handed it to Rockwell. He cradled it with both hands as if it were the elder wand and slowly lifted it up towards the light. Peanut thought she could hear the hallelujah chorus playing somewhere. <gasps> it's beautiful, he said in a strange trance-like voice. Then he burst out laughing. Peanut, who had thought he was being serious, immediately flushed with embarrassment. Rockwell realised that he'd misjudged the situation. Um, actually, uh, I think that maybe you should do this. It's your, your pencil, after all, he stammered, handing it back to Peanut. Of course I should do this, harumph Peanut. She grabbed the pencil from him and pulled a sketchbook from her rucksack. She sat on the bench and started to draw. Again, she was struck by the pencil's weight and how easily the lead seemed to glide across the page. It was as smooth as silk. She was so caught up with how nice the pencil felt to hold that she'd almost finished the picture before she realised what it was she was drawing. It was an apple, exactly like the one she had eaten on the way to school that morning. Peanut looked at her sketch and smiled. It was good, better than usual. In fact, she thought it might be the best drawing she'd ever done. She held the pencil up to her eye, studied the tip. Then she picked up the sketchbook, turned around and held it up to show Rockwell. What do you think? 
Crikey, he exclaimed. It's brilliant. She felt her cheeks redden. Thanks. She ripped the page out of the sketchbook, grabbed a piece of tape and stuck the drawing to the whiteboard. OK, she said. Pick up the apple. Rockwell laughed. Yeah, right, he said. But Peanut wasn't smiling. Oh, you mean you actually want me to do this, he said. Come on, the joke's over now. If this was your way of trying to make me look like an idiot, it's not going to work. Look, you said yourself that you have to conduct a controlled experiment to either prove or disprove a hypothesis. Well, my theory is that the stuff I draw with this pencil becomes real. If you're so smart, why don't you prove me wrong? Rockwell looked at her. He could tell she was serious. OK, you asked for it, he said nervously. He reached out towards the picture, extending his fingers as if to grab the apple. He glanced over at Peanut and smiled. He looked back at the drawing and took a deep breath. Then something very strange happened. At the point where Rockwell expected to feel the surface of the paper, he felt nothing, not a sausage, nada. In fact, his hand just kept on moving. It kept moving into the drawing, straight towards the piece of fruit. Two seconds later, to his utter amazement, his fingertips touched the apple. Instinctively, his hand closed around it. And then, miracle of miracles, Rockwell pulled Peanut's sketch out of the sheet of paper and held it in his hand. So there we go. That's where our adventure begins. That's when they discover that this pencil really is magic. So if you could draw something, anything, that would become real, what would you choose to draw? Why don't you drop me a little line and let me know what you think. I'm going to be back soon. I'm going to read you another one of my favourite chapters. Um, until then, everybody, keep on reading, keep on drawing. You can order my book from wherever you get your books. I'll probably put some links in this post. But if you can support your local bookshop, please do so. All right, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.